Hydroponics does not have to be expensive. I'm telling you right now that you can start hydroponics without spending a single cent. You have these five things in your house right now. My job is to teach you how to use them. Hey, my name is Nat and I've been growing plants without soil in my closet for like the past two years. For those that don't know, hydroponics is the practice of growing plants with their roots in the water opposed to a traditional growing method, which is usually roots in soil. This video will serve as a basic but thorough how to start hydroponics guide. Your time is valuable, so I'm gonna try to keep this as concise as possible. So if you've already started your hydroponic journey, this should probably be like a brush up on things you've learned through your own growing experience. Feel free to drop a comment down below so that our newcomers can learn and just be inspired by your own personal hydroponic stories. My goal for this video is that as soon as you finish watching it, and of course comment and subscribe, you can start hydroponics immediately. So in a traditional growing setup, soil provides a lot of things. It provides nutrients, it provides water, it provides air, it provides structure. It provides a way for the plant to be held up. So this video is going to be focusing on how to set up a very basic type of hydroponic setup called the cracking method. Now in a hydroponic setup, we are basically taking a lot of the purposes that soil serves and just separating them across the system. You have your plant hanging up here, you have roots hanging down in the water, and then as the nutrient solution is taken up by the plant as it's absorbed through the roots, the reservoir level lowers, which exposes the roots to air. So to start hydroponics today, I swear I'm not clickbaiting you, it's like legitimate. You really do only need five items. For the cracky setup we're doing today, there are two primary physical components. We're going to be needing a way to hold the plant up, so a net pot. You'll see why I put net pot in quotations like in a little bit. And you're also going to be needing a reservoir, which in this case will be a jar. And then for sprouting, you're of course going to need seeds. You're going to be needing a growth medium and also a plastic bag. So generally speaking, the purpose of a net pot is to hold the plant in the growth medium. By holding the plant up, it allows the roots to hang below and enter the water reservoir. There are two kinds that are kind of the most common. There's two inch net pots and three inch net pots. Really the necessary cup size depends on the type of plant you're growing and also just the container or system that they're going into. A bigger cup means more support. So for a head of lettuce, you don't need that much support, you can use a smaller cup. For my jalapeno pepper, that guy got big. For my pumpkin, that guy got huge. You don't want them in a two inch net pot, you want a three inch net pot. The next step is to find a reservoir or just the whole base of this cracky setup. For this particular setup, we're gonna be focusing on jars as our container slash reservoir. You'd be surprised as to how many jars you might just have lying around in your house or you'll just come across the coming weeks of groceries. So this right here is like a standard mason jar. Now you could imagine my absolute like horror and dismay when I tried putting one of my three inch net pots in the top of this. I'm telling you, this broke my heart. I had just purchased a whole pack of these net pots and I was like, if they don't work in my jars, like, what am I supposed to do? So then after a bit more research, I realized that you need a specific type of jar. You need a wide mouth jar. You probably have them at home, I, I promise you. This is just a normal wide mouth jar. It fits perfectly, but it doesn't have to fit perfectly. You can use anything in between. So this right here is an old jar from a bunch of olives that my parents like. Um, not sponsored, just something they get on their grocery runs pretty regularly. Now this jar, if you tried this net pot, Wow, like it does fit more. There's enough of the net pot in the jar that this is a stable setup for the plant. It will grow just fine. So I'm telling you right now, chances are that you don't have to buy any fresh jars for this. You don't have to go to the store and buy like a pack of mason jars. Check what you have around the house. And if you don't have anything in your house yet, check your regular grocery items or just see if you can buy a glass alternative. I've also heard that they sell jars on Facebook Marketplace. So if you're looking for like a sustainable secondhand way to get your glass jars, that would be the way to go. So for two inch net pots specifically, you're really not gonna find any like classically shaped jars that will fit. But what I did realize after a really rough week in school is that you can fit these like perfectly into the Starbucks frap jars. Obviously again, not sponsored. Okay, I know it looks silly, it's like sticking out, but with the way that the plastic is, like with the way they bend, you can just stick them in and then they fit nice. <laughs> Honestly, like it functions well. It's better for smaller plants. Like I grew some sage in here, I tried some basil. So this is like pre-YouTube, but this is like the very first thing I tried and it worked. It, it functioned as a cracky system. Again, it is a smaller bottle, so you're limited by the reservoir. So you'll have to check up on it more often. You'll just have to make sure that the roots aren't absolutely like dying, that there's nothing in the jar. 
But if you have that covered, then it does function as a cracky system. And it's also just a good way to use these glass jars. So especially if you have kids in the house, um, you probably have a lot of jello, applesauce, yogurt containers that are either being recycled or just ready to eat in the fridge. So one of these jello cups is actually pretty close to the width of a three inch net pot. We can see that it like, it basically slides in. It's not a perfect fit, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. It will serve its purpose as a net pot. Now, when you look at a net pot versus one of these, there's a pretty clear difference, and it's the fact that this doesn't have any holes. There is no way for the roots to get out of this net pot right now. So with the way these net pots are built, the holes are large enough for the roots to exit the net pot and then enter the reservoir. What we're gonna do is just make some holes. So what you can actually do there is just cut one big hole in the middle. So as the baby roots are going through, they can just hang from this one center point, and it should function well enough. Alternatively, you can use a small drill, or you can use an exacto knife to just poke holes in this. I feel like I'm legally obligated to disclaim that if you were for some reason a child watching my video, get parental permission or supervision as you're doing this so you don't hurt yourself. So right off the bat, you should be sanitizing your jars. This is just like a basic health thing just to make sure there's nothing yucky in the jar. And it's also just a pretty easy, straightforward step to preventing disease. There's two main steps to sanitation here, uh, using detergent and then using a disinfectant. So detergent is pretty simple. It's your straightforward wash the dishes type stuff. So when you're doing this, what you're doing is removing dirt and grease from the jar and that allows a disinfectant to just properly attach to the surface and disinfect it properly. There's two disinfectants that I would recommend. So the first one I would recommend is hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide is just generally accepted as a good disinfectant for hydroponics, specifically because it's been FDA approved for crop and agricultural applications in terms of cleaning. So not only can you disinfect your glass jars with it in like the start of your setup, you can also add hydrogen peroxide to your reservoir in small quantities if you're trying to get rid of a disease, a algae, a basically any pest or problem that could be affecting your plant. It's a good disinfectant even later in the stages of hydroponics. To have an effective yet safe cleaning, you should be using 3-5% to hydrogen peroxide. And yeah, you just spray that on a paper towel, you wipe it down, and then you just wait for that to dissolve. So hydrogen peroxide is a pretty common thing to have, but if you don't and you're like in a pinch and you're about to film a video and you don't have time to buy it, you can use rubbing alcohol instead. Now, this is not something you're gonna put in your reservoir later, but you can use it for just an initial surface disinfectant type thing before you prep the jar further. The rubbing alcohol you use should be 70% or more to be an effective disinfectant. Bleach in this context is bringing like a, a gun to a knife fight. In my videos, I've used bleach a lot just because I had it. Uh, just for the specific context, it's not very environmentally friendly to use bleach, and it's also just way too harsh. Unless there's like an issue, like you have diseases everywhere, your garden has turned into a madhouse, the other two should suffice. So plants thrive in warm, very abundant and light environments. And the issue with that is that so does algae. When algae grows, it kind of steals oxygen from your plant and just generally messes with pH. It's just like actively fighting your plant and that's not what you want. Because algae will win. Your plant has nothing on algae. <laughs> what you can do next is actually paint or at least cover your jar to prevent algae. There is multiple ways to do this. At the very least, you can put like a newspaper or covering around your jar. Now with this method, I would recommend cutting or wrapping the paper in a way that you can still see like a sliver of the reservoir. This way you can still check on the water level and not accidentally starve your plants. A more secure measure would be to actually paint or spray paint your jars. I recommend spray painting, it's just easier, you're gonna have a more consistent coating and it's just more effective in terms of covering the whole jar. So for this I would recommend two coats of a darker paint, preferably black, and then two coats of white on top. So the purpose of the black here is to just prevent that light and the black just absorbs it and just limits that access. The purpose of the white paint on top is so that the light is reflected off the jar. So not only is it not getting inside the reservoir, it's then being reflected back up the plant can then use that light and to just, you know, boost. Plant likes light. Plant likes photosynthesis. It's good for the plant. You want more light. After all materials have been purchased or DIY'd, we can start growing. In traditional growing, soil is used as the growing medium. In hydroponics, substrates like clay pebbles, rock wool, and peat moss are often used. However, if this is your first time growing, you probably don't have any of those at home. So our objective right now is literally to just start growing. If you're starting from seed, there are multiple approaches. Paper towel sprouting. Simply dampen a paper towel, then enclose it in a container so that it maintains moisture and humidity. 
Keep it dark until the seeds burst open and you see green. Then put this by a window sill or grow light. Or you can start with soil. Your seeds can simply be started in soil the traditional way, then transferred to your basic hydroponic system when large enough. If you have a plant clipping already, that can be as simple as putting the clipping into water and having it bound so that the stem is sitting in your water reservoir with the leaves on its side. In the meantime, as your plant is germinating or setting root, you can order material like nutrient solutions and powders, growth mediums, and even lights if you want. Nutrients are not absolutely necessary until root growth is significant. The seed has enough power for the first push of germination, and if your nutrients arrive within the week, you should be fine. Thank you so much for listening, and comment below how it goes. Remember, when you guys help out, we all grow better together. Remember to subscribe for more hydroponic YouTube videos.